yourself before him with this song. of the living God, the holy Jerusalem, the innumerable company of angels, and the spirit of the just men made perfect. Father, to you we have come. Have your way in this service. That at the end, my God and my Father, may your name and your name alone be glorified. Whatever body or children have come with before you, Lord, we cast them unto you. Father, O oh God, let it become a testimony. Amen. Thank you for you are here. As we declare the service of the name of the Father Amen. and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For in Jesus' mighty name, Jesus. we are prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 For the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Are we happy to be in the house of the Lord? Oh, yes. Then can I hear your amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Ah, it didn't reach my hell. Hallelujah. May we please be upstanding as we enter into a time of praise. And even as we praise, I want you to reflect. Today is the last Sunday of October. From January till now, the Lord has been faithful unto us. So when you are singing and you are dancing, it should come from a place of gratitude. Amen. Amen. Very quickly, welcome somebody. Hold somebody, tell them that you love them, put your hands together and praise the Lord. Good morning. Hold somebody, tell them that you love them, put your hands together and praise the Lord. Hold somebody now, somebody now.
There's no one, then we would like to hear the word of God. Do we have anyone here that wants to share testimony, a prophecy, or a vision with us? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to sing to glorify the name of the Lord. Amen. I am honored to be in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. the flag. In a and cause your way to fall. Open the flag in a and cause your way to fall. Baba Father, we pray 
Pastor Sharon. Glory to God. Please, they can help us prepare yourself. Oh, to give us the word. Amen. I just want to use this message to just thank God for my life. But on Tuesday, I turned 29 and I Amen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. That she will live long and divine earth will be our portion. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for keeping your daughter up to today. Father, Lord, we desire for her, oh Lord, Father, Lord, that you be highly favored. You will live long with prosperity, joy, and happiness. Divine earth will be your portion. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Um, as our time is far spent, we would not waste much time and invite to the podium the man of God who God has prepared today. And it's not that I think in Edward. Oh, please clap. You are not clapping for me. You are clapping for the glory of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Kept by the power of God. We are kept by the power of God. from the beginning. Most of the time I come around and um, let's see the preaching is about ending or maybe after preaching the prayers. But today I'm really blessed. Amen. Amen. I want to say God bless the prayer worship team. I miss this English session so much. 
back on campus, it was so nice, so joyous. Amen. Amen. In this Christian journey, we realize, we realize that many a time, there are certain things or certain um, equipment, certain accoutrement, certain arsenal we need to help us in this Christian journey. Amen. Amen. But you realize that we as Christians, certain times, because we don't know certain things, because we don't know certain technicalities, we fail in certain aspects of this Christian journey. Amen. Amen. Let's say you are writing an exam. And it's a comprehension question. You've read the question, or you've read the passage, or you've read the passage, but you didn't get the understanding. What then are you going to do? Uh -uh. This is it. What then are you going to do? You remove all this uh, disturbance. <coughs> you the whole I hope the one that we are not using. What are you going to do as a Christian? So it has become very expedient, and very important for us Christians to be able to know certain things that will help us prosper. The last time in the key assembly, we were having a prayer session, and I was telling them that, look at these Muslims. We Christians see ourselves as more righteous than them. We follow the way of Christ. We follow the way of God. But how come these Muslims are prospering, and some of us Christians I saw struggling to be fine food to eat. Some are doing this formation, one zero zero. When I talk about formation, they eat in the morning, and that is it. So they eat, that is one in the morning. Zero in the afternoon, zero in the evening, they go to sleep. Some do one zero one. A whole lot of formations. Amen. Amen. So it's important for us Christians to know these things so that we're able to prosper in the Lord. Amen. Amen. So this brings me to the theme for today's service. The theme for today's service is standing firm by wearing the full armor of God. Amen. Amen. Standing firm by wearing the full armor of God. We are going to read from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. If anyone has the amplified version, I would like from there. The amplified version. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. The amplified version. If there's no one, then I read myself. <laughs> Chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. But we are going to take it bit by bit and we go. Can I, can I read? Yeah, Ephesians yeah. yeah. 6, verse 10 to 18. The amplified version. Yeah. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Hold on for me. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. So if you have the amplified version, you realize that they've put in bracket, draw your strength from him and be empowered through your, through your union with God. Draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him. So you realize that we don't draw our strength from the food we eat. The food we eat doesn't give us strength. But what gives us strength? Our union with God. Amen. Amen. So we have to be able to. Can you please say it for me? We will read. Don't worry. So we have to realize that we as Christians have to know the source of our strength, which is God. Amen. Amen. Can you please continue? Yeah. Draw your strength from. Draw your strength from from Him and be empowered through your union with Him. And in the power of his boundless mind. So his might has no boundaries. It's not like Germany that you say, when you go down south, there's Österreich. When you go up top, there might be Amsterdam. Yeah. When you go here, there might be here. When you go here, there might be here. No. He has no bounds. Amen. Amen. Can you please continue with 11? Put on the full armor of God. Put on the what? Full, full armor. He didn't say some of the armor. Or he didn't say the armor. It says, put on the full armor of God. For Can you please hold on for me? Okay. You realize that armor. when David's father, Jesse, sent him to the battlefield to go and give food and other stuff to his brothers, yeah. he got there and he realized Goliath was insulting God, yes. being so blasphemous, mm. saying this and that. He's going to defeat everybody. Everybody was just afraid. 
you will say they were being cowards. Mm. So David, as a young boy, as a small boy as he was, mm. decided that no, I will fight Goliath because I have what the strength of God in me. Amen. 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 What happened? He was taken to the then king Saul, and Saul gave him his um, apparel, mm. his arsenal that he uses for war. So you realize that when you watch a lot of movies, they put on the full armor. They have the helmet, they have the breastplate, yeah. they have the belt yeah. Yeah. where they hang their um, knife or whatever it is. Yeah. They have their shield, and most of the time they have their boots or their shoes. Amen. Amen. So he says we have to put on the full armor, not just some of the armor. Amen. Amen. The full armor from head to toe. I went to work one time, and when we closed, one of my supervisors, because it was quite early in the morning, it was like, it's very cold, so he covered it, his, almost every part of his body with something. So we realized he is fully prepared for the weather. Mm. No matter what, he's ready for the weather. Mm. Amen. Amen. So when we put on the full armor of God, we are able to stand firm. So you can't just say, I am standing firm. No. You have to do something for, us, for you to stand firm. That is why for my introduction, I said that, you see, these Muslims, we, we, we say that we have Christ, and because Christ is of our, of our strength, he gives us everything we need. But these Muslims follow certain things. I was telling them, you have to give to be given. You can't go to the farm and have in mind to go cut your maize without planting. Mm. No. You can't go to the exam and decide that today I'm going to get 100%. Without learning anything, no, it doesn't work that way. There are few people who even um, have that ability, but even for them, they have to go to class. So you can't just stay in your bed. Me, I'm sleeping. Me, I'm eating. Me, I'm playing game. Me, I'm watching movies. No, it doesn't work that way. You have to do something to get something. So you have to put on the full armor of God to be able to stand firm. Can we continue? Um, for his precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavily armed soldier. Of a heavily armed soldier. Continue for me. So that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the schemes and the strategies and the deceits of the devil. Amen. To be able to stand successfully. So, am I standing successfully? Amen. Am I standing successfully? Amen. To be able to stand like a soldier who is going to battle, who is going to war. So, you have to stand and stand successfully. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter, sorry, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8, where Paul says that, I have fought a good fight. I have run the race. I have won. I have finished. Now what is left for me? The crown of glory. So you realize that from this, we are fighting. We are going for a race. Let's take 100 meters, for example, because we all like these 100 meters. Let's take Usain Bolt, for example. They are running, and before, right before they get to, let's say, it's 100 meters, so they've got, they've got into the 95th meter, and the same boat decides to stand. And let's say, I myself passing. Who is the winner now? I am the winner. Mm. Who is going to get the crown? I am, good, I am going to get the crown. So we as Christians have to be able to stand firm, as I stand firm, be able to do all things, finish the race, fight the fight, do all things, Go against the schemes of the devil, go against the strategies of the devil, to be able to resist the temptations and the deceit of the devil, so that we are able to get the crown of glory. Amen. Amen. So you can't just decide to do whatever you like as a Christian. No, it doesn't work that way. There are certain things you have to follow. And one of the things you have to follow as Christians is that we have to put on the full armor of God. Amen. Can we continue? For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Can you hold on for me? It's not against what? Yeah. When I have an issue with a daddy, I'm fighting with a daddy, so I know who I'm fighting against. Let's say I live in the same house with a daddy, and I have an issue with him. So if I want to kill him, either I'll kill him in his sleep, or if I'm the one cooking for him, I'll give him something poisonous, he dies. But imagine you're fighting against something you don't know. Mm. Mm. Just sit down and ask yourself. Mm -hmm. Fighting against something you don't do. I was having a conversation with my mommy yesterday, and she goes like in three, we do a There's something in the world. You can't even be a cobra. Thank you for that. You can't even be a cobra. If we had slept, we would have locked, closed our doors. In this part of, I think for Germany, the security and everything is okay. 
But you go to Africa, even with burglar like, proof, people are still breaking into houses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> people are still breaking into houses. So you realize that we are not fighting against things we, are, we see with a naked eye. I was telling my brother yesterday that you have to get the third eye. Eladis, my friend, how to know who Eladis? How to know who Eladis? I remember I went to work one time and there's this guy who has who is seeking asylum in Germany. So he asked me to show him my um, the permit card, the electronic one. I'm sure you guys realize what I'm talking about. Yes. So I showed it to him and three days later I went missing. I'm telling you this. Your paper get missing. I'm telling you. My my this is rich. It got missing. I went to um after I closed from work, I had to go see someone. So I went to the place and after everything I came back home. So it was I think three days later I realized the thing I had got missing. So I decided to ask the person for him to check his premises. But I was there. The person checked. There's nothing there. <laughs> So I had to book a new appointment so I could go because without it you can't travel outside yeah. Germany. And even sometimes when these police are meeting, they might worry a bit. Uh -huh. So when I realized it was missing, it was on a Sunday. I was going to go my. I took my wallet out of my pocket. I realized my card is not in it. Oh Lord, my but every card is there. <laughs> what is happening? I didn't see anything. I went to the police station to take um, the police report. Yeah. Then I started with the whole process for a new permit card. So I was there one Friday in the evening. I was I was just relaxing. Then my, my brother comes to me. This is your car. Ah. <laughs> and where was it found? It was found, it was found in Danita's Bible. Huh? The card was found in Danita's Bible. And before that, I had not gone to their room because I really go to their room. <laughs> <laughs> no, <Marco. laughs> see, we are not fighting against things we see in our own eyes. Yeah. No. I remember one time when I started with this, I went to school abroad, I went to school abroad. I had a dream and um, after I think I, only one person or two people I had a dream and I was trying to cross a bridge. So there were people ahead of me. They crossed their bridge and they go to my tent. When they go to my tent, they were, I'm sure you know an anaconda, right? Those big, big snakes. Yeah, those trying to prevent me from crossing their bridge. <laughs> we are fighting against things we don't see our eyes. So there was this woman who used to organize prayer sessions, Wednesday prayer sessions in my church. I spoke to her and decided to pray. The next time I realized I had crossed the bridge and got into a, got into a house after the bridge. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We are not fighting against things we see with our naked eyes. Can you continue from there? Contending only with physical opponents. But, it, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, mm. against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural places. In the heavenly supernatural places. You remember the story of Daniel? Daniel prayed. And when his response was coming back, yeah, things held it up. <clears throat> there are situations, I have a friend who went for a visa interview, and it took three months. Before they had to call him to bring his, you see, for Canada, you go for the interview, everything, mm. you keep your passport. Then, when everything is successful, they ask you to bring your passport so that they stamp in for you. They stamp the visa in for you. Took him three months. And when they sent him the email and he went to the place, he told him that you should have sent the email long ago. Or they, they already sent the email. So, he didn't know how come he didn't receive the email. Oh. <laughs> that is why we need the full amount of God. Amen. 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 We continue from the 13. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger. Can you please hold on? Yes, sir. Full armor of God so that you'll be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day or the day of danger. So you realize that we're able to resist. Let me take it again. Mm. Resist and stand your ground. Sometimes you're able to stand your ground, but you're not able to resist. Mm. Let's take a situation where uh, I am a, a deacon, and people feel like when you're a deacon of the Church of Pentecost, you are so joyous, you are full of fire, full of passion. No matter the temptation that comes across you, 
no matter what happens, they are still able to sail through. I'm in my room, maybe my box actors and my singlet, and the lady walks in, trying to tempt, tempt me or trying to seduce me, and I decide to just blow tones. Mm -hmm. What will happen? <laughs> <laughs> what will happen? Just, just try and picture it in your mind. Just try and picture it in your mind. Just try and picture it in your mind. So, so realize sometimes you're able to stand, but not resist. Sometimes you're able to resist, but not stand. Let's take the case of Joseph, for example. What happened? He flee. He flee, though. So I, back is when he told my friends. You see, the Bible didn't say that's a run. It's a flee. So fleeing can be flying. <laughs> it can be entering the earth. It can even be disappear. I like that. Disappear. <laughs> Shh, I'm gone. So I am what? I am fleeing. So the Bible says, no other sin gets to the body than the way for the nation yes. or I don't do that. So if you're able to put on the full armor, I like that aspect, full armor. If you have a Bible, you can underline that. Full armor from head to toe. Amen. Amen. Can you please continue for us? Yeah. And having done everything that the crisis demands, to stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable, victorious. Immovable, victorious. victorious. I like that part. So, when I put on the full armor of God, I am prepared for whatever comes my way. Hmm. Let's take soldiers who are going to battle, for example, in those 16th century, 12th century, 13th century, and all that. I'm sure you've watched other movies where soldiers are going for battle. You realize that at the forefront, if the enemy or if the opponent is able to break your, your, your front, they come for everybody. So if we are standing, we are standing with our shield so that we are preventing the enemy from getting to us. So we are fully prepared. We are fully prepared in our place, immovable, unshakable. Because the moment we shake, the moment we move, we are losing the battle. So if we are able to stand firm, fully prepared and immovable, then we become victorious. Then we become victorious. Okay, she's worked out. Yeah, but she has okay, to so it. from the 14. So stand firm and hold your ground. Okay. Having tightened the white band of truth, personal integrity or moral courage. Can you please hold on for me? Having tightened the band of truth, personal integrity and moral courage. Ask yourself, do you have morals? Hmm. Just ask yourself, do you have morals? There are situations where here, because of um, the, the way the system is, it's very difficult for you to, let's say, I work in a, a shop. It's very difficult for you to steal something. Or let, I'm, people don't call it stealing. I'm just taking one away. With the coffee. I'm taking one to the house. Because of the electronic system. So if you take one out, somebody is going to realize that one is out. But let's take a part of the world, for example. People are going to take cuttings home. Cuttings. Cuttings. Cutting. People open shops, give it to someone to sit or be the operator of the shop, and the, the store runs down. Why? Because they are stealing whatever is in the shop. They are stealing both the proceeds and the goods itself. Ask yourself, do you have morals? If you're able to put on the band of truth around our waist, we get to have morals. I read, it comes from the truth of the word of God as do other pieces of the armor. We cannot master our own truth, righteousness, or salvation. To secure the belt around our waist, you must come to the source of truth, which is Jesus Christ. After all, in John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except what? Through me. The belt of truth prevents us from falling to the devil's lies. If I know this thing is five, you know, and you tell, it, you tell me it's ten, because I already know what it is, I'm not going to fall for that lie. I'm going to Hobanov. From here, the simplest and easiest way is to take the tram to Hobanov. So if you tell me I have to take the tram to this direction, what are you trying to tell me? Mm -hmm. I'm going in the wrong direction. So if you know the source of truth, which is Jesus, no one can come to you and tell you that this is this, this is that. No. Mm -hmm. Because you already know the truth. You already know the truth. If we don't have an understanding of the truth, the rest of the armor is useless. The 
the rest of the armor is useless. If we have the belt on crooked, we have difficulty gripping the sword of the spirit, which is God's words in time, and risk having our vital organs exposed. Imagine they are going for war, and the belt is hanging on the soldier. They say the belt is around his knee, around his thigh. Which, is, which in, in, the, in the correct manner, is supposed to be around his waist. If he is to grip it, or if he is to take it out, how long do you think it will take him for him to take it out if he's been attacked? That's why we have to have the belt of truth or the band of truth around our waist at the right place at the right time. Mm. So that you're able to stand firm for Christ. Amen. Amen. Can you continue? Um, yeah, personal integrity, moral courage, around your waist and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. An upright heart. An upright heart, like that part. Is your heart upright? Is your heart up upright? Sorry. There are certain things people do, and sometimes you question yourself if they are actually Christians. That's my brother. Love. The Bible says, "Love your neighbor as yourself." So you, you can't just tell me that you are loving your your brothers or your sisters. Are you loving this person? You are loving that? No. Love your neighbor as yourself. And people do some things. You ask yourself in your heart: Does this person? Is this person actually? Have moral instinct. I still have an upright heart. There was this story I read on Twitter this particular week. This Nigerian student who has killed his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. She's cut the girl and put, I think, cello tape or something around the girl and put her in a hoop bag. Sometimes you ask some of the things that happen. Are these people morally upright? Do they have an upright heart? Do they even have the mind of God? Can you please sit for me? So, in this, in this our time, in this our time, the best spirit of righteousness is the upright heart, or in this normal time, people call it the bulletproof. In the, but in the olden days, they realized that when they are going to they used to have something around their heart or around their bust, so that when someone throws an arrow, it doesn't get directly to them. The heart is arguably the most important organ of the human body. As the breastplate protects the heart, it will be dangerous for any warrior or soldier to go to the battlefield without the breastplate firmly in place. It protects the heart. Righteousness, on the other hand, is also seen as something being right aligned with how God ordained it and how God sees it in the natural, moral, or legal sense. Also, whereas act deeds and attitudes considered right. As the breastplate protects the heart from the from the from evil, the church must also put on righteousness as the only sure protection of the heart from the corruption of this world. According to Apostle Paul, the only protection to, we can give to our heart from the corruption of the world today is to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. Amen. Can we continue? And having trapped on your feet the gospel of peace in preparation to face the enemy with firm footed stability and the readiness produced by the good news. Readiness produced by the good news. It may seem strange to consider shoes to be part of your armor, but can you imagine going to battle shoeless? Imagine I come to church and I'm the one preaching and I'm here without wearing a shoe. How other people see me? Hey, is this a king okay in here? Oh I'm sure the, I'm sure maybe the, the mind has twitched their legs. How can you come to church shoeless? It doesn't work that way. You would likely most you would most likely be in pain with every step as you pass over all kinds of harsh landscape. Ultimately, it would inhibit your ability to fight. Gospel means good news, and referring to the sacrifice Jesus made for us to be saved, this brings us peace. We realize that most of the time we have crusades and people come. I can't sleep. We have a lot of money. I can't sleep. I can't do this. I can't do this. I remember back in JHS, there was this um, teacher we had. And he used to say this very often. He used to say that he doesn't have money. So when he sleeps, he can leave his door open. He doesn't care about anything. But those from Ghana, I'm sure you've heard, you know of Nana KJC, right? Nana KJC, he sells um, building equipment or building construction equipment, cement, iron rods, and all that. He can't sleep. Why not? He's scared something happened to him. 
the rich man I know, very, very, very rich man, he has like four hundred, four. Who we have having a call on this one, then another call will come on the second one. Having, so you try to receive the second one, the third one like that. Because he doesn't trust anybody around him. He doesn't trust anybody around him. As Christians, we are called to share the good news of Christ with others. Having our shoes fitted with the gospel of peace allows us to do this successfully. Our shoes equip us to walk in rough areas and in the same way have hope in Jesus because he strengthens us to walk through trials. As Christians, we should always be prepared as we never know when an opportunity may arise to share the good news of the gospel. Mm. The shoes of peace equip us to also fight spiritual battles. Let's take this for example. You are in class or you are at work. Then you see this colleague of yours. You realize he's going through a lot. He's going through a lot. The other time, um, an arrangement came to the church assembly and he was preaching. He made like a, a, a scenario where one of his colleagues, he smokes almost every day. Not almost. He smokes every day. So you realize they, they go for this smoke break with five minutes, ten minutes. And he's smoking. So he says one time, they asked him, does he smoke? And he said, no, he doesn't smoke. Then later on, he tried preaching to the brother. And with time, the brother was able to quit smoking. He was there one time, and the person died the man. Why? Because he has been able to help the brother quit smoking. So you realize that you may never know. You might be in, um, in, the, in an urban you realize someone has just gone unconscious. And just in this part of the world, it's quite, it might seem some way or might look some way. You can just touch the person, say a word of, a word of prayer. God, heal this person. And you know you've done your part. And God will surely do it. Amen. Amen. Can we continue? Above all, lift up the protective shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Amen. Shield is a broad piece of defensive armor held in hand, generally used in war for the protection of the body. So realize that when they are going to battle, they have their shield on their left hand. So some, when the, um, the enemy or the opponent throws something, they always have their shield to protect themselves. We can say that the shield protects the soldier from any missile that is thrown at him. In Hebrews, at him. So you realize that when someone... I'm trying to defend myself, I just read my shield, and I'm able to defend against anything. In Hebrews 11, 1, the Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Amen. Let's take this situation for example. When you were kids, on your birthdays, as your father has promised to now, these kids, they like, they like exp expensive things. You can't buy um, uh, a phone, 100 euros for a kid, and the kid will appreciate it more. Hmm. Like iPhones, iPads, mm -hmm. MacBooks, Airport Pro 2, whatever, whatever. <laughs> Nike, this. You, 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 you guess what I'm trying to say? So, in your bed days, you are anxious. Hey, what am I going to get? What does this person bring into me? Because when I came, I realized in this particular part of the world, they really enjoy their bed days. In my bed, I'll just eat cake and sleep. <laughs> but here, they, they have big, big parties. You spend 500 euros, this amount, that amount. How anxious you were, and how anti you were in, uh, in anticipation. What am I going to get? What am I going to get? You knew you were going to receive gifts, another special treat, but some would also come as a surprise. Bad days combine assurances and anticipation. You have faith. You have faith. So you know that no matter what, come with me, I am getting something. Mm. Apostle Paul encourages the Ephesian church to use faith as their shield in their work with God. Seeing faith as a shield means the believer is completely protected and defended against all the ills of our world if his faith is grounded in the Lord God. You read Hebrews 11, 6. It, says, it is impossible to please God without faith. Because those who come to him must know that he... Amen. Amen. The shield of faith. The Bible also says that if you have faith as little as the master seed, you can tell the mountains to move what? To the sea. Mm -hmm. And it will go. Mm -hmm. Many a times you are faced with major problems and ask ourselves, how am I going to maneuver this? How am I going to do this? Let's take driving for example. You are driving and there's this heavy duty truck 
in front of you and you want to maneuver it, you want to overtake it. Because you have faith in yourself, you just come out, you realize there's no car coming. So, then you overtake the car because you have faith in yourself. If you have that, if we, we even have that little faith in God, we can imagine the number of things God would have done for us by now. Amen. Amen. Can you continue? And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. Please hold on. The helmet of salvation. When we put on the helmet of salvation, we put on Christ himself. When Brother Moses was leading the Bible studies, he said something. He says Christ is the head. So everything from here, if Christ is here, everything from here is protected. Amen. Amen. Christ protects not just our heads, but our entire being from spiritual death. To wear the helmet of salvation means to live every day focused on eternity and the promised future we have. Some people live their lives as if when, when they die, that, that is all. There's a, there's, a, there's a song in P, No. Who and sign? Bible says that after death, there's what? Judgment. People say that if, let's say, God is. We, 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 those, we, the mathematicians, if we're able to calculate when God is coming, let you give us that God will come 100 years from now. And most of us wouldn't be alive by then. Uh-huh. As you might be, most of us wouldn't be alive by then. So I can say that then I'm going to live my life anyhow. Because if God is not coming, then um, when I'm about dying, I'll do this. Uh-huh. I'll repent on my deathbed. God forgive me for all my sins. Amen. Then I die. That's the work that way. People sleep. And if they are asleep, they die. Mm-hmm. People as young as 10 die. Anybody can die. So how about at the back of your mind that we have to have, yes, we have to have our minds focused on eternity. Amen. Not just right now. Amen. 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 It changes the way we live. When you are focused on salvation, when you are focused on eternity, it changes the way. You don't just live like that. You go to school and you're not going to write an exam. Do you just sit down and say, um, when the exam is coming, let's say, two hours before the exam, I'll learn. Mm-hmm. We the students, and most of us have been through the school system. So imagine you are learning 300 pages or 30 different presentations in two hours. How are you going to feel? Even, even those who learn from the beginning of the semester, how do they feel when it's time for the exam? And those, those of them, or those people in that class who decided to learn two hours before the exam. Back in school, used to have some people um, the night before the, the particular paper. They will go all night. No, 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 it doesn't work that way. It has to be a gradual process. Amen. Amen. Salvation is more than the future benefit that we, we, we want to have. Let's look at this situation. I'm here. I've made an investment. Thinking next year, because I've invested 20,000 euros or 100,000 euros, I'm expecting that even if the interest rate is to fall by 0.2 or by 0.3, um, I can get an additional, let's say, 50,000 or an additional 20,000, which I can use for this particular investment. That is true. But when we have salvation, we know that one day, when the Lord appears in his glory, or one day, when we put our hand on our chest and we die, we meet God. We are going to the right place. Amen. Amen. Salvation redeems us, it restores us and protects us and shields us from daily attacks from Satan. When you have to say people run, people run because they are not saved and because they fear how it might happen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Can we continue? Um, I the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. The word of God. The sword of the spirit. Everybody say the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit. You watch movies and people go to war with just the sword. But they, they are still able to defeat whoever they want to defeat or whoever they are fighting against. Let's listen to this. Our chairman, Apostle Eric Nyameche, says something. He says we are to raise an army of Christians who being filled with, with the knowledge of God's word will engage and transform their societies with godly values and principles wherever they are and in whatever they do in order to win many for Christ and transform them into salt and light of the world. Amen. I take it again. This time I will go slowly. We are to raise an army of Christians who being filled with the knowledge of God's word. 
So you realize you can't go, you can't just go into the world and decide to just say whatever you want to say or do whatever you want to do. No. You have to know what you are doing. When you read Mark chapter 3, verse 27, it says that who can go into a strong man's house to steal his stuff? Unless you yourself you are stronger than the person. Before you can do that. Before you can do that. So we as Christians have to know God's word. Amen. Amen. And engage and transform their societies with godly values and principles. Not anything. Godly what? Values and principles. Are you godly? Do you have the knowledge of God's word? Wherever they are and whatever they do, in order to bring many for Christ and transform them into the salt and light of the world. What does we use for? What, what do we use salt for? We use salt to make food taste good. Understood? What do you use light for? To make we see things. Imagine you are blind. What are you going to do? So those in the world who don't know Christ are blind. Be in a church. Be who have come to the saving knowledge and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Have to do that. Go into the world and win them for Christ. Amen. Amen. Apostle Paul describes the word of God as a weapon. Good knowledge and understanding of the word of God is therefore critical in our quest to becoming prepared armies of God. If you are not filled, how then do you go out to do something? No. Mm-hmm. You have to be filled and full of the word of God so that when you are speaking to somebody, you are able to convert them for Christ. Amen. Amen. The sword being both a defensive and offensive weapon is likened to the word of God. Because of its ability to pierce the human heart, so potent is the sword that as it enters into a person's being, it brings about transformation in their lives, both Christians and and sinners alike. You realize that as we, even we as Christians, even we as Christians, sometimes there are certain 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 things we falter in. We have certain certain shortcomings. So when we come to church, we learn the word of God, and we're able to come back onto the right path. The word of God also has equal effectiveness on Satan and his courts. Let's take Jesus after he had done his fasting and all that. What happened? He was taken to the mountain top, and Satan was tempted him. But he was tested by Satan. What did he do? As soon as Satan said, you, see, you realize that there, Satan knew the Bible. There have been situations where even Muslims know the Bible. Because they want, they want to argue with you. Mm-hmm. They want to argue with you. Mm-hmm. They want to argue with you. What did he just say? The Bible says, it is written. It is written. So you quote me, I quote you. Without knowing God's word, it is impossible for us to do anything. The Bible also says in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, that this word always be in your mind. Meditate on it day and night. Every day. I used to have this elder who says that whenever, whatever you are doing, be praying. You are sleeping, you are praying. You are eating, you are praying. You are bathing, you are praying. Because what? You have the word of God in you. Amen. One thing we have to know is that as Christians, when we put on the full armor of God, it protects just our front. If we you realize it, certain of the armors or certain part of the armors protects both the front and the back, but you realize most of them protect just our front. So it is good for us as Christians to not go back. Because when we when we backslide, when we rescind, what happens? The devil is able to get us. The devil is able, is able to get us. In Jesus, we are victorious, and no matter what the tactics of the enemy may throw at us, God has everything under control. And one thing you have to know is that after putting on the full arm of God, you have to have the Holy Spirit in us, who is able to quicken us and make us fruitful in everything we do. It is my prayer that as we put on the full arm of God, God will help us and equip us so that we're able to do everything He wants us to do. Amen. <laughs> What do we say to our deacon? Let's be on our feet. We pray shortly. Our time is fast spent. To sum it all, he made us aware to have an instrument. That is a weapon. 
the easy bible to put it an instrument of god that is what he listed righteousness faith so the eighth thing he said that we will prepare ourselves for deep prayer so i just want you to ask god for these instruments of god that i can live righteous i can use the fruits which is peace that peace will reign that i can use the helmet of salvation that i'll be able to spread the word of god that people will come to know the knowledge of christ and they will be saved and to end it all it takes the spirit so let's ask for god's spirit As a matter of that, the message that is preached demands a deep prayer. But because of our time, because of our time, like we will pray into a certain realm. But because of our time, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for this rich instrument of war that we will position ourselves against these days of evil. We pray a deep spirit of prayer that we will be able to be victorious in these last days. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. He does my need for me. My trust in him. Oh, I know that Jesus is my savior. Jesus is the rock for me. He does my needs for me. Oh, I put my trust in him. Ah, I know that Jesus is my savior. I know, I know.
for blessing us with this wonderful day. Father, we gathered here as saints to hear your word and we've been filled to the brim. We thank you so much for this day and the rest of the day. As we leave here, Father, we pray that may your spirit never leave us. Be with us, protect us, guide us. May Amen. every step we take be into the glory of your name. We leave the rest of the week in your hands as we go to work, as we go to school. We pray that may you protect and keep us. There are members who couldn't make it one way or the other. We pray that you keep them wherever they are and bring them back with us next week. We say this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Before we take the benediction from our presiding elder, please do we have anyone joining us, visiting us for the first time today? We want you to wave unto us so we can welcome you in a special way. Oh, we have two people. Can we please have mics given to them? Amen. Um, I think most of you know me. I'm from Stuttgart. Yeah, and I came for a visit. Hallelujah. God bless you. Let's clap. That's the glory of the Lord. Thank you so much for visiting us. Please, those around him, can we give him a warm welcome? Hello, my name is Sheila, and I came for a visit as well. <laughs> Let's welcome our sister. ask our elder Richman to pray for our visitors and that whatsoever desire they came with here will be fulfilled. Amen. One more, one more. My name is Laura. Are you visiting us? Uh, yes. You are visiting us. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. Please, I would like our elder to come forward. To we want to use him as a point of contact. The purpose of him being here was the child is being admitted at the heart central. That is why he is here. So we are praying that God, the great physician, the mighty healer. Whatever the child is going through, he will perform in the child's life. Open your mouth and begin to pray for him. Your word is true. You send forth your word and it's healing. To the centurion, if you believe, and the scripture says immediately, there was a report that the child was healed. We pray as we send our message to the hospital, wherever she is or he is, may the healing power of God touch. And may we hear a good news that God has done a great thing for us. Likewise, we commit our sister into your care. Whatever might be her heart desire, I pray in the name of Jesus. Grant it unto her. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's quickly raise up our hands as we've been living this week. It's a glorious week. As you have the faith in Him, let's share the grace together. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forever. Amen. Go with the assurance that you are blessed. The Lord will visit you this week. I shall have a testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.